Uh, welcome back to the Grey Lounge outside. A little blurry over the last oh, yes. 24. Oh, you've cut yourself, son. Yeah, just yeah. a little shave this morning. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. We'll probably get through the next 30 I think minutes. So. I think. <laughs> You've had work. If I fall over, you just have to pick me up. <laughs> a little dusty outside. And it's quite something to think that yesterday should have been mm. the last day of the English Premier League season. Today, Liverpool really should have been planning a tour of the city, shouldn't they? Oh, yeah. Yes. For the title. Yes, one. they should. Um, will they? We don't know. Uh, we record in advance of... Mm the Premier League shareholders meeting which probably won't come to a conclusion one way or another but it'll be interesting to see how much of what we're about to discuss from the weekend's newspapers mm. actually does come to fruition. 25th I meeting. think Richard. I think they're going to squeeze it. I've said it all along. I think the Premier League have got so many problems. Hold on, 25th for what? Start 25th of May, no, 25th of year, a final decision, an oh. ultimate decision. <clears throat> I've, I've said it all along, we cannot keep pushing it away, pushing it away, and say, well, we hope we might get started. We hope we might get started. You can't do it for supporters. You can't do it for players. You can't do it for clubs. Somebody, whether it's the government, the UK government, or the Premier League itself, has to take responsibility and say, right, on the 25th of May, this month, we are no longer going to search for our ending of this season, or we are definitely unless something happens, we are definitely starting on the 12th of June. If it's left of the Premier League, they'll bottle it, <laughs> as they are about to, the biggest decision they've ever had to make, which is whether to block the Saudi attempted takeover at Newcastle United or not, having spent three years chasing the Saudis for the illegal theft of intellectual mm. rights, they're about to roll over now in the biggest climb down of its kind, in my view, in history. And, and the natural conclusion is that uh, they will never again be able to return to a court to hunt down people that have been illegally streaming mm -hmm. because here was the perfect chance to say no, benchmark, stop, can't have that, but they're not going to. In my view, this week that takeover will probably get waved through because our attention is elsewhere and mm -hmm. it's, it's a disgrace if that were to happen. There we are. There you go. Top earners, top Instagram earners in the Premier League are? Well, to this well to this point in to the point in the season when we stopped playing from January the first then to now. And Danny, the Premier League, Danny yeah. Sabalos, one hundred and one thousand one hundred and ninety three pounds. <laughs> in in descending order, Pereira, Gundogan, Zuma, uh, uh, Kepper at Chelsea, uh, Brandon Brandon Williams, Gomez, Wijnaldum, Maguire, Sidibe, and these guys are earning. Uh, not one of them has earned less than £50,000 from Instagram. Just Instagram year. alone. Yeah. And that's interesting. There's so few British names that you read out there. An awful lot of foreign footballers in that. While I'm in the mood, um, mental health is a very serious issue. Mm -hmm. And it's something you and I were talking yeah, yeah. about five, six years ago. Yeah, more. And I'd absolutely. like to think Andy helped put on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I think it's poor for Kyle Walker to use his mental health as a reason why he was caught out again, breaking stay-at-home guidelines. People with mental health issues deserve better, Kyle. Now, I may be I, wrong. I, 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 let me play I, devil's I advocate. Wrong. What if he has mental health problems? I may be wrong, and perhaps he does. But I'm not buying that. No? No. And I think it's... I think to play that card in those circumstances, Andy, is, 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 is belittling the seriousness of mental health issues. And those people around the, the UK who are in locked down in, mm. on the 16th floor of a, of a tower block in, in, in Wigan or wherever else it might be. Mm. I mean, he's got a lot more going for him in his life than they have. No, listen, I'm, I'm not denying from what I read that Kyle might have problems, personal problems, but there are personal problems that everybody has to deal with on, 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 in an everyday life that far outweigh a lot of the things I've read. Mm. That's what I would say. Uh, a weighted home and away points per game proposal has been mooted to decide leagues one and two. I quite like that, by the way. Uh, Weighted yes. means you take into account the yes. last few games home and away. No, you, you, you take into account the percentage of points you've won away from home and home. But let's say Villa have got 10 games left and six of them are at Villa Park. Yeah. They would, they would decide on a percentage. How many percentage points did they win at Villa Park? Those six games that they have at Villa Park would be converted into that. Then they take the four away games left, I'm sure, and say, right, what percentage of away games points did you win? That's the percentage of points you're getting. So it's a balance between your good home form and maybe you put away from. Peterborough United go up from League One with a weight. Well, they go into the playoffs. 
uh, with a weighted system. They don't otherwise. Darren McAntony... But they're already there, aren't they? As, of, as the league sits, they're in the... Yes, but if, if we use, the, if we use the, the other of the two systems, mm-hmm. they slip out of the top six and therefore don't well, take place don't in the Don't you think, though, then, Richard, if we're talking about there's an unfair advantage if we, if we go to neutral grounds for these teams that have got these home games, then why, if we decide it goes to points per average, why shouldn't it be weighted Andy, more in home than away? In my view, you, well, I, I, I repeat what I said in the blog yesterday. I don't know what we're trying to achieve in playing on. I don't know to whose benefit it is. Um, we'll come around to it a little, mm. little bit later in the programme. But uh, a, a weighted system in the Premier League means West Ham, Villa and Norwich are the three that go down. West Ham, Villa, Norwich, a bonus survive. Mm-hmm. Wow. Where's the integrity there? West Ham should have had a better home record. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, as we're all talking about the financial meltdown of the Premier League, Puma are about to make a decision to offer Raheem Sterling oh, an endorsement no. contract I know. worth I know. one hundred million I know. pounds. Are you looking for a reaction? I think your reaction says well, listen, everything. Well, all I would say, listen, Raheem, lucky boy. Yeah, listen, he's, he's been sensational. But right now, does that make really? sense for Puma to be announcing something like I, I that, the way the world sits sense right now? any sports brands company to, to, to be in that situation whereby we're talking about figures of that nature. No, not announcing it's it, just Richard. Don't announce it right now. When five they're... subs, ditching VAR, that was the news on Friday. Mm-hmm. Five subs. Where is the integrity in suddenly using five subs? Why do you keep using the word integrity? It. Because it's the Doesn't one they're apply. talking about. The Doesn't apply. Uh, and VAR, uh, UEFA have said VAR can stand out, but not by Saturday in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Mike Riley has said, no, 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 no. Of course, if we restart, Mike, we're involved as well. Yeah, You're not getting boss. away with that. Yeah. So uh, he, he has said, we're, we're, we're back if well you're done, back. Mike. 50 Premier League players already to snub the restart. 50. I'd, I'd like to know the percentage of Barmy mm. as well, because I mm. think that, that, that the lads who are four times more likely to catch coronavirus have a serious, yeah, yeah. serious reason to say, I'm not getting involved with this. Mm-hmm. I'm really not. Well, let's say there's 500 footballers, Richard. That's 10% so far that we're led to believe that we'll turn down the opportunity. Opportunity. We'll turn down the chance to start again if, if it's announced that we're going to play on. And that 50 will increase as we get nearer kick-off time. Referees have had a win over the tax man in the UK. Those that refs. aren't. Yeah, the refs. Those that aren't employed full-time. Those that have other jobs have been deemed to be freelance and therefore will not be paying tax at... Um, PAYE rates. Okay. So, oh, and it's something we discussed on Keys and Grey again. I can go back to season before last. Boy, the Rovers is back. Is that? Yeah. No, Melchester <laughs> Rovers. Roy's back. Ah, Melchester. How would, how would Roy? Roy Race, I think his name was. He that? was. How would he have dealt with coronavirus? Oh, my goodness. Roy would have shrugged it off. <laughs> of course he would. Yeah. Of course he would. Like any fan. <laughs> By Saturday, uh, outcry over rapid virus tests for Premier League players. See, I, I, I get that. I understand yeah, yeah. that. Whether you're buying them in privately or not, Brighton have had some criticism because they're using NHS tests. Yeah, they are. Well, whichever test you're using, if they could be used for frontline workers, <laughs> then, then, then surely they should they be, should be yeah. wherever you're getting them yeah, from. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Paul Barber said a lot to say these last few days, but I think he'd be fairly quiet on that. Brilliant piece from Barney Rennie in The Guardian Saturday. Um, uh, he, he's, he's of the same mind as me. What, what, what are we trying to do? Uh, he posed a few questions. Um, I liked his, his paragraph here. He said, let us be clear at this point. No spin or vested interest. Here is the dialogue that led us to this point. First principle, it is obvious to no one in England that no one in England should play professional football this summer. Uh-huh. That's, that's his start point. Okay. Uh, there isn't time to play the games. It's not medically safe. Train properly, plan properly, restart in August, the end. That's what he says. The counter-argument from football is, but there's a billion pounds at stake. OK, well, just forgo that part of the season. More money will come. You can absorb this, says Rennie. Uh, football. But we can't. Our finances are insane. We spend three billion or 70% income on wages. Some of us, on the way up, spend more than we earn on wages. We're rich, but we're also reckless and greedy. OK, then, take a collective haircut to preserve the model. Share the hit sensibly as you as you can if you uh-huh. want to, yeah. uh, you're all in this together. Yeah. And, and so it goes on. Um, he's, he's not convinced, and, and I have to say, Andy, I'm not convinced. I just, I just wanted to be ready to start again at the very latest by September 12, which is the beginning and start point for next season. Latest start point. To get all the games and everything mm-hmm. else scheduled. Listen, I, listen Richard, I, 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 if you gave me the option, I'm sitting here today, I, 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 
my life has been football. My life since I was 15. Um, I've been involved in uh, either as a, an apprentice for Dundee United, right up to I am now. So my life has been the sport. I love it. I want to see it played and I would want to see it back as soon as possible. Given the option of restarting, unsure, to achieve purely a financial gain or a not a financial loss, do that and risk the beginning of next season not kicking off as close to when it should, it does, or calling an end to it this year, as the French government have done, and said no more sport till September. Mm. Do that and then work towards a safe um, way of starting next season where we won't have players saying, I'm not going to do that because this, I'm not going to do that because that, where we won't, we hope, have no NHS frontline worker untested or have the ability to be tested and looked after. Give me that instead of what we have now, I'll take it. I'm 100% with you. My life has been football, not quite to the same degree as yours or as close as you have been to the game, but I don't want to watch football in empty stadiums on neutral grounds where there can't be any contact in, in, in penalty boxes from corners where, where you, you tell me it's a natural process. I've never quite um, believed that, but where spitting can't take place, where handshakes can't happen prior to a game where goals can't be celebrated where you just get an anemic watered down no, I, version you of do. what we're all used you to do. And, and that's not for me I, I no, don't I know want it's that for you. Well, no it's not but given, the, given that and what I'm saying is if we gave me that and, and, and the, the players were given all the guarantees that they could be given it, it is as safe as it can possibly be here's the, here's the criteria we're not taking tests away from the frontline workers or NHS but you are we're not. Let's say, listen, we've read it. Steve Parrish has already said that, who's, who's a big advocate if we can yeah, start but, but to start. Whatever you're getting your test from, if it's available, it should be then made available to NHS and yeah, yeah. frontline well, let's workers. Say the, like Whether the, it be... Let's just say the frontline worker. I'm just to say the criteria that are fulfilled okay. here. The frontline workers are all looked after. There's not a problem. They're getting tested and, and they're happy with that. And we can move on and we can guarantee... We, and as much as you can guarantee any player's safety on a football pitch by testing, by having everything as... As Which of course you can't. Clean. It's, well, it's ridiculous. You, well, you can't to, to, to pretend you can guarantee. Well, you the can't guarantee of a anything because you can't. I can't guarantee I'm going to walk to the shops today and get yeah, back safely. I, I know that, but that's an entirely well, different. Well, not, but it's an argument. But what I'm saying is, give me that, and the players are happy to start. And this is the one thing we have to remember: forget the Premier League, forget the government. Well, forget the Premier League because this is a government and a footballer decision. The government say no, we're not starting. End of. Doesn't matter what the Premier League want to do. If the government in the UK say there'll be no sport, no, no Premier League this summer, then there won't be. And if enough players, let's say 20 clubs, 25 players, 500 players, okay? 500 players have got to sign up and say, we want to play, yes, we're happy to do so. Of, of those 500 players, Richard, if, if over 100 turn around and say we're not playing, I think it's difficult we're if we start again. beyond the problems of June 30 where so many contracts run out. Mm. No one's come up but with again. a solution to that. Uh, away from that issue, Gus Hiddink, it's been a good time for people telling tales. Gus Hiddink, um, the former Chelsea manager, mm -hmm. he was there in 2009 oh, when right. Barcelona came and played basketball. Oh, remember? that game. Oh, that yeah, was yeah, amazing. Yeah. 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 Uh, Hiddink has said the game could very well have been fixed. <laughs> See, I... You would buy that, wouldn't you? I would buy into the... Thi I, I've never seen... Obredo uh, uh, yeah. was the referee that night. Yeah, yeah. He had an absolute shocker. Yes, he did. Uh, the previous year had been an all-English final. It was in the interests, I think, of the majority for another not to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not suggesting for a minute it was fixed. I'm just saying decisions that could and should have been made perhaps weren't. It was a, it was a strange evening. I remember it very well. Four or five? Four yeah. or five? Penalty oh, decisions Richard, that went against uh, The referee himself, one handball earlier in the game, should have been a penalty, he says. People will always have a different opinions about the match, but... Um, yeah, it, it, at least one. UEFA General Secretary <laughs> David Taylor says uh, it's a media conspiracy. There well, it's not a media conspiracy because Gus Hiddink, who was the manager of Chelsea, yeah, yeah, has yeah. restarted the debate. Yeah, he did. So how can it be a media Listen, conspiracy? There's been some strange ones over the years we could debate. Everton, Kalina, did they deliberately disallow Duncan Ferguson's goal because UEFA you, 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 didn't want Everton in yeah. because there were four other English yeah, teams speaking in it? Of Everton, there was another one, wasn't there? Um, end of season game. Yeah. Um, Oh, Wimbledon. What? Mm. You're joking. We played great that day. <laughs> yeah, we did. I, I want to say we, I wasn't playing. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I wish it was clean. <laughs> in every newspaper you pick up, there's a debate about should we, shouldn't we, a back page of the Mail on Sunday. This could cost lives. Uh, clubs um, reveal their fear over Premier League's project restart and want to delay some clubs. The rebel clubs. No, those clubs that are thinking more clearly than the top six perhaps can who want to finish it. because they simply want to see bags of money coming through the gates. We can't delay it, Richard. We can't keep delaying it. We can't keep delaying no. it. No. No. We can't keep um, delaying it. Uh, from the Sunday Mirror, um, uh, Dunny's hairdryer, uh, he talks about integrity. You've just mentioned it to me. Uh, he says, there is no integrity in the Premier League. There isn't in the government. If, just back to the Saudi bit. If the government wanted to stop that, Andy, they could. But you'll hear them talk about trade deals and arms deals with Saudi Arabia going forward. So they're not going to get involved. 6.7 billion Premier League has contributed to the GDP in the UK since the start. Yeah. 6.7. It's, it's one of the hottest exports that the UK has right now. That's the deal you should be protecting. Sports rights is the deal you should be protecting, Mr Johnson. It, it, is, it, is, it is wrong to turn your back on it and leave it to somebody else to have to make the decision. Uh, it's never been quieter to the world than it is at the moment. Nobody's fighting each other. We're all fighting coronavirus. Yeah, and, and it doesn't need arms, and we don't need arms to fight it. Um, so I, it's, a vaccine. it's poor to walk away but it, uh, uh, Dunny talks about uh, integrity he says this season Sheff and this is the point that we've made a number of times you and I Sheffield United were able to feel their strongest team against Everton but not against Manchester United why? because the keeper's on loan from Manchester United so they have to drop him yeah, that's right. his argument is drop the loan system in the Premier League and I think he's 100% yeah, right yeah well, listen if there's so much money in the Premier League which we're led to believe and the clubs are so rich why do they need to have to borrow from each other yeah shouldn't happen Lend outside of the Premier League, yeah. no problem. I'm sure there's a good championship club would have taken Dean Henderson and he would have got... Yeah, uh, listen, um, he's loved being Sheffield United, but he would have learnt an awful lot playing at that level. Yeah, so where's the integrity? He's right, there isn't done. 67% of wins by clubs uh, this season in the bottom six are in their own stadium. Mm -hmm. You can see why they want the familiarity of their own stadium, that mm -hmm. bottom six. Who go on to say on the back page of the Sunday Mirror, axe the drop and we'll play. <laughs> you can't. You can't. Well, you can. You can't. You can. You can't play, have an end of the season, and say we're not going down. No, but that, no, I'm sorry, you that can't. satisfies the top six who are more keen to play for European places and qualification into the big competitions next season. Bottom six are happier, I think. Bottom six and more, just to say, look, player safety is more important than chasing the money. And, and I couldn't agree more. Senior police official in the West Midlands has said that the Premier League's project restart is fraught with risk. David Jameson, the West Midlands Police and Crime Commissioner, says, why put my boys on the front line and risk their lives in order to police football matches? It's got a point. It's got a point. Well, listen, uh, every day a policeman goes out, he's putting his life on the line pretty much right now because they're in parks dispersing people who are gathering there. Um, they were celebrating with the VE Day yeah, streets. All with a purpose, adding football to the risk. Or the long no, list of no, risks. I, I, I've said to you, I, I think, like, um, if we get the criteria, if we get the testing that's, that football is saying we're going to get, and I see if, okay, I see if. In my opinion, a bit like Steve Parrish, one of the safest places you could go to would be a football pitch to play football. I'd, I'd, I'd feel much safer, given the criteria that we're, we're, they're looking for to restart, project restart, given that they fulfil it all, I would be happier going on a football pitch and playing football than I would if my Rachel said to me, nip down the shops, would you, and get us some groceries. Mm. I'd, be much, I'd feel much more comfortable so you, you, on a football you, of pitch. Of course you would. So you, you, you'd rather have the opportunity to, to play football and have that luxury of being able to do so beyond that of the normal man who has to go down the shop and, and pick up his groceries. No, no, I'm telling you where I'd feel safer. I'm not saying, that, I'm not saying Rod, that's what. I'm telling you where I'd feel safer on a football pitch. Rod Little. In the Sunday Times, I like Rod, it's funny. Although there is, uh, I'll get round to it. Um, he said, why the clamour for football? I'm not missing the idiots who, who, who manically celebrate tap-ins. He, he goes on to mention a number of things here that frustrate him about the game, Andy. And I think he's got a point. Um, he said, I don't like managers who, when their side are 2-1 up, bring on three substitutes in the 91st minute. <laughs> Oh, that's when you're bunk wheels. <laughs> said that for you. That's when you're fine. He says, similarly, players who pretend to run off after being substituted but are actually dawdling as much as they possibly can. He says, that really gets my goat. Okay. Referees, he's one for you. Referees, when confronted by a player, angry a decision that they have made, run rapidly backwards. 
while pointing histrionically at their top pocket. <laughs> That's a good one. It's true, isn't it? I get that one. Uh, and he says, I'm, I'm weary too of these seemingly compulsory one minute silences at every game, frequently in honour of someone who almost nobody's ever heard of. He said, it, he said it undermines a lack of respect uh, for those who deserve the one minute silence in football matches. Uh, he says, I don't like Jurgen Klopp's unearthly smile. There's something unnerving about it. <laughs> <laughs> Those German built teeth, Vorsprung Dirk Technik. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't yeah. like Pep Guardiola's woke leftist sensibilities, he says. <laughs> oh, he's having the right go. He, he, by the way, it sounds, I think you two should do a show together. <laughs> You'd get on well, really well, you he's, two. He's had a go at everybody. But could you imagine, Andy, if, if somebody else, uh, myself perhaps, had uh, made this very point. Forgive me, just keep talking while I find it. Um, it's, it's really important. Uh, because, so it's quite a controversial point you're about to uh, uh, I, I think utter. It, I think it's, it's quite an interesting point. Um, by whom? By, by the very same aforementioned uh, Rod Little. Uh -huh. He says, I'm not missing TV studios where, he says, he says we haven't even uh, got to the corner kicks of grappling and holding players from, we, we, I've mentioned that to you yeah. earlier. He said, and I, I'm not missing the box ticking appearance of a woman in the post-match pundit circus. <laughs> now, oh, don't write. If, if I, had said that, mm. or others, mm -hmm. perhaps, other than Rod Little in The mm -hmm. Guardian. Mm -hmm. I think there may have been a bit more of a furore. Oh, I you? think you would have got battered on Twitter, son. <laughs> and no, 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 no question about that at all. <laughs> uh, Mail today are talking about dirty tricks. Premier League stars offered incentives to convince teammates to go back to Project Restart and new contracts. No, you can't be doing that, I'm sorry. But I, I read a bit of that today, Rich. That's one of the ones I did read. Now, I think clubs, have, clubs can't right now talk with everybody at the same time. So they, they're, they're talking to their senior pros, which is the most natural pro process to do for a club. You get your senior pro and your captain, normally as your senior pro, and you talk to them, this is where it's happening, this is the things. Can you take it to the boys and say, this is what we have? Um, I don't believe that uh, players have been, I guess it's almost bribed, would be almost bribery yeah. to, to, to embrace Project Restart. No, players are, are, are not daft and uh, they will judge and their, their selves. And it's an individual decision that they will have to make whether they feel comfortable with going back and no um, promise of a new contract or no promise of a nice deal here, I think will change any footballer's mind who is uncomfortable about starting back. I must say, it, it will have happened by the time this airs, as I said right at the mm -hmm. start, Andy. I would love to be a fly on the wall at that meeting today mm -hmm. because I think the resistance is, is generally very well thought through and understandable. Mm -hmm. But I equally, I, I repeat what, what I did earlier, I too want to see live football matches mm -hmm. being played again, but I want to see the product in all its... It, as near as, near as we you can do, get but do you, to no, the finished product I, I, yes, that we've been I, I used agree to watching. With, I agree with you, and I will, we've not got much time. I agree with you, Richard, but I would like to, rather than nothing, and I say if we can, if all the criteria are met and all the players are happy and the referees are happy and the Premier League are happy and the government are happy that we can start again, I would rather see competitive football, whatever guys it is right now, for a short term to, 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 to get it done than nothing at Get all. Get that, but then, right? you, then, you, then you extend to the problems of where will people watch the football matches in each other's lounges in groups of 20, 30 or 40. Well, you've got to and what will Liverpool fans do the day that their title is, is confirmed? They'll be on the streets of Liverpool. Whatever guarantees the supporters club have made to the police, it's inevitable. Wherever Liverpool are playing, they're more likely to be gathering around the Shankly statue. And I understand that. It's, it, that 30 years, you, you want to go out and celebrate with people, something special. So therefore, there's, there's the inherent danger beyond players on a football pitch but, but you can't, to, to people well, that, got, that, that, that haven't got the luxury But you can't, just, you can't turn around and say, well, we can't start football because in case Liverpool fans celebrate the day they win the title. No, well, that's I, not, I think it can't, is we can't do that. one of the elements that we have to consider. Where will people watch the game? In Germany, we've got Dresden locked down, but we're going to carry on playing. Why? Because the Germans want to sell their product. It's the one big league that doesn't sell. It, I think commercially is a wonderful opportunity. Let's get playing first. No, they can't, no, no. Angela Merkel made the decision, so I can't believe the Chancellor of Germany has said, 
Right, let's get started because we might sell the Bundesliga. No. It's a, well, think, I'm not think of that. the money that the Premier League generates for yeah, the British I know, government. It's, I know. A, it's a very, very worthwhile mm. exercise to pursue. Yeah. So I, that, that concerns me, Andy. I just think there are so many ifs and buts and maybes yeah. right now that we don't know enough about that if we get further down the line, we'll have the answers to. Therefore, that's, that's for me where we are. At the moment, it's very much, the Premier League is very much like you and I. Every day we wake up right now, it's Groundhog Day. <laughs> well, it is. What are you going to do today? Well, I'm going to go for a walk, I think. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, I might go for a walk. I'm going, to watch okay. I'm going to stay in and watch television. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm going to watch a lot. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll be in the company of a current Premier League football manager. Wednesday, um, officialdom. I think yes. that's the best way That'd to, be good. To, to say that. Yes. Wednesday, officialdom. Um, Anyone Thursday? Yet? Uh, not yet. I think, I think decisions as the week progresses yes. will, will okay. dictate where we go on Thursday, yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. In, the, in the meantime, um, we are continuing continuing we are continuing <laughs> to abide by the Qatari um, uh, restrictions surrounding COVID-19 yeah. so uh, no change in our part of the world absolutely not we're here five days a week wherever you found us if it's on B in sports or you will tomorrow uh, for our international viewers YouTube at the same time every day and there's a whole host of good stuff you can look back on if you're joining us on YouTube in the meantime stay safe everyone see you tomorrow